Toy Adventures here again with another figure review. And today we're taking a look at something pretty cool. It is a exclusive two pack straight from Hasbro Pulse. Today we're taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Steel Core Commander versus Twilight Guard. So this is the newest two pack from G.I. Joe Classified Series. They've been doing quite a few of these uh, two packs recently, mainly with the Night Force and the Mad Marauders. You have the Night Force Falcon and, and Quarrel and uh, the Mad Marauders. Um, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was still Night Force, Low Light, and I um, can't remember who else was in the pack, but, oh, uh, Spirit, of course. So, yeah, they've been doing a lot of these figure two packs, and this one really caught my eye. Um, I like the Steel Core Commander, he looks neat, but it's the Twilight Guard. Now listen, ever since I was a kid, I was a huge Minecraft kid growing up, and the Enderman was always my favorite enemy in the game. Like, I was obsessed with the Enderman. You saw kids in, like, in Creeper hoodies? I was in an Enderman hoodie. I had one custom made, okay? I was obsessed with Enderman. Um, black and purple, uh, subsequently, subsequently, was my favorite color combo. And it still is to this day. It's something that's always stuck with me. So when I saw this Twilight Guard, I knew I immediately had to have this pack. There was no questions asked. I already like the Crimson Guard a lot. And uh, seeing that they have a black and purple variant uh, really, really did it for me. I heard a lot of people saying that this is a weak kick bash, which is basically when you take parts from other figures to make a brand new figure. Um, G.I. Joe's been doing that since the beginning of time, okay? Pretty much like 50% of the G.I. Joe toy roster are kit bashes from other characters that came before. So kit bash is nothing new to me. I do kit bashes. Of course, Hasbro does kit bashes to make new figures. Uh, it just depends on if it's a good combination, if the end result looks nice. And I think the end result here looks really nice, very unique. But um, I'll have some different little nitpicks and maybe things I, th I think they should have done differently. But overall, I still think this was a great and really interesting idea. So here at the package, the, the, take a look at the packaging, I mean, it's pretty standard. You have the large window, which I really like. Um, you get a really good look at the Steel Core Commander here, who is this really nice kind of dark navy blue with this nice OD green. It's a really interesting color combo and kind of makes me think of the navy almost. It maybe makes him look like maybe a marine or just a navy soldier or something like, you know, a sailor soldier. I'm not entirely sure what you'd call like an armed guard on a ship that comes... I guess you just call them marines? I don't know. Someone in the navy is going to have to let me know who, who he would fit best. But um, it's a really nice color combo. I can understand why people may not uh, like him as much as the others because he doesn't really fit in with the other steel cores because he's a completely different color scheme. But like a lot of these uh, classified figures, he's based off of an 80s figure and that's what he's meant to homage, to be homage to. So uh, while he doesn't quite fit in with the other steel core color wise, I still think he is a great figure and a great homage to an old uh, toy. So. I still think personally that, you know, with how crazy G.I. Joe's color schemes are, as long as they're wearing similar armor, they fit in. So for me, he, is, he will work just fine as a Steel Core Commander going alongside the other Steel Cores. Uh, I actually like this one a little bit more. Uh, I'll get into why once we unbox it, but as for now, packaging is pretty standard, except it is pretty standard, but you have do have a nice view of everything that you get. In fact, not actually everything. It, they're, they're showing you what they could because there's actually so many accessories in this set that what you're seeing here just isn't everything that you actually get in the back, so which is really cool. I mean, that's that's always special when there's just so much going on. They can't show you everything initially. Taking a look here at the back. It is really cool. I love this image. It is just so epic. Uh, it's a little interesting that they're not looking at each other. But man, that, that, that Twilight Guard pose is so cool. Figures like this where you get an entire pack of a M60 with blue highlights. Uh, these assault rifles with blue highlights. These assault, these fictional weapons with purple highlights. It's really special because obviously you can give these to other characters uh, in, in your collection and maybe if you think they fit them or whatnot. So uh, really nice box set here. And uh, got a little distracted there, but it's a really nice back image. I love the poses. Yes, they're not really facing each other, 
but I just love the dynamic look of it. It looks like they're stuck in a battle or something. Looks really cool. Shows you all the little unique additions it has, or paint apps it has. You know, you have the painted shotgun shells, which I don't know why they're focusing on. It's not super special. But, uh, you know, stuff like this decal that says Steel Core, uh, this little unique Cobra decal. I've actually never seen that kind of Cobra decal before. Maybe they made it up for the Twilight Guard. And you have their little stats down here. Shows you what they're good at. I'm not even gonna try and assume what those stats mean. So you guys can go ahead and turn to decipher that hieroglyph. Here on the side, we have a really, really cool um, render of these characters as like a realistic render instead of them as toys. This is one of the things I love about these classified figures is getting stuff like this. Getting to see these characters look a little bit more realistic, how you could really imagine them looking in real life. I love it, especially that Steel Core Commander. He looks really good. Uh, yeah, really like this side box art. It's really, really nice. I always love the box arts with this classified line. Anyway, that's pretty much it for everything in the box. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see truly everything we get with this two pack. And here's everything you get inside the box. And boy, is it a lot. You get quite an armory for both your commander and your twilight guard. So of course, let's go over the armory first. Starting with our steel cores armament. What did the Joes issue our commander? Well, he's been given one of these awesome M60s that we first saw with um, rock and roll. Now here's one thing I was worried about when I saw the promo pictures. Come on, focus. Get all that good detail in there. There we go. One of the things I was worried about in the promo images is you only saw this belt piece and not the box with the ammo, but the box with the ammo is included. So you do get both options like you did with rock and roll. We can have the um, box attached to the side of the weapon, or if you just want to have the belt dangling, you have both options. And I love that because this box really is cool and I'm happy that they gave this option as well and it's such an easy switch obviously you just unplug it and plug the little belt in and there you go so also with the folding bipod this just feels like a nice premium weapon and I'm always happy to see it included in anywhere even if the M60 is a super dated weapon this little figure of it is just such a high quality cool little interpretation of it that I am always happy to see it appear. They're Joes, they use iconic equipment, so of course they're still gonna use the pig. And for these two rifles, they came with the um, Vipers originally. I don't know what the rifles these are supposed, specifically supposed to be, or even what they're supposed to be modeled on, so any gun nuts or gun experts in there can let me know what kind of weapons they are, but they're really cool. You know, we've gotten a few of these, I have a few of these. These ones have the nice blue decal on there to go with, I believe, Night Force. Um, technically, it's supposed to go with the Steel Core Commander, but these make great Night Force themed weapons. So for all your Night Force characters, this is a great armory pack for them. This one too, with the uh, detachable silencer, really awesome. And especially in this Night Force configuration, I'm just gonna leave that silencer on there because it really fits the uh, Night Stealth Ops kind of feel. Really, really, really cool stuff. Obviously you see all these different blast effects. These are modular, so they have little plugs, you know, uh, holes in one side and a peg on the other. So you can kind of make the blast effect look a bit more dramatic if you want. You can kind of customize them, add them, add to each other to make a really crazy looking effect. Really nice. I always loved Hasbro's blast effects with these. You get a gold little sidearm for our commander. Pretty cool. Well, it's a gun with a, with a gold slide. Really neat, a little bent because of the packaging. They are still rubber. Now moving on to the uh, Phantom Guard. A little bit interesting here. These are all sci-fi weapons and they're all from uh, Release One Gung Ho. Back when the toy line was still using Nerf and Fantasy designs for their weapons, which I think fits for Cobra. They're using Mars technology, which is Destro's company. So they are technically using uh, his designed weapons, which are mostly laser and fantasy kind of doodads. So it fits for Cobra to have maybe not always real weaponry and some more fictional and uh, fantastical weaponry, especially for their more elite forces like this Twilight Guard is assumedly supposed to be. So first we get this shotgun, which of course came with um, Gung Ho. 
And you know, you know what I'm gonna say, guys. For any fans of Halo Reach out there, this is straight up just the tactical shotgun from Halo Reach. Uh, it's like undeniably like 90% there of being the Halo Reach tactical shotgun. I saw, I said that the moment I saw it with Gung Ho, and now that I actually have a version of it, it's pretty cool. I do like it. I mean, the tactical shotgun looks great, but it's just so interesting and funny how close it looks. So cool to have a finally a G.I. Joe-ified tactical shotgun. I don't even know if this is supposed to be a shotgun, by the way. This might be a different type of laser weapon entirely, but because it looks like the Halo Reach shotgun, and it's got a clear slide right there, or a clear pump, I'm gonna assume this is a shotgun. Then you have more of like a, uh, a TAR 2000, I think. Am I that the right weapon I'm thinking of? Um, I am not super well versed with modern weaponry, but it looks like one of those modern bullpup rifles. Pretty interesting. No uh, sight on it, interestingly, which you kind of think for a super advanced military, that they'd have at least some kind of red dot or something on there. But you just seem to have a front sight without any back sight or rear sight to line it up with which is kind of interesting. But again, I think this is supposed to be based on a Nerf gun. Then you have this really cool grenade launcher looking thing. This one's definitely based on a Nerf gun. I think I remember seeing it. I think my friend owns this uh, Nerf gun, in fact. But pretty interesting. It makes a cool little grenade launcher. But if you're a fan of Nerf, you're probably not gonna be able to unsee this and you just might wanna arm this guy with some different weaponry. Then you get this backpack, which of course carries everything. Um, I'm not entirely sure how. I'm not sure how all this stuff lines up, but somehow it does. Because you get all those little, you know, connection points and whatnot, which is really cool. Because that means you can have him hold one weapon and carry the other two on his back, keeping them on his person at all times. Oh, I think there's even a spot up here for a third weapon. It's gonna be a really awkward fit, but theoretically, you know, I just did it right there. I mean, it's not pretty looking, but you can get it looking a lot prettier. You can theoretically have all three of his weapons on his persons at once, not being even carried. So that's another cool uh, carryover from Gung Ho, is this backpack. Obviously the sword is a carryover from the Crimson Guard. Pretty cool, nice to have it in this color deco. And then he has a pretty interesting little pistol. I kind of would have hoped that the slide would have been purple too, just to keep up the theme, but I guess a silver slide still makes sense, right? Gets a knife, of course. I would have, again, maybe preferred a purple handle to the knife, but I guess black still is in the color scheme. Again, I'm trying to get as much purple out of this set as I can. That I love about this set is that there's purple in it. Now, here's the wild card, this M16. Whose is it? Uh, well, technically he has four weapons and he has, well, if you wanna get pedantic, four weapons counting the sword, but not four firearms. So that would make me think it goes to the, you know, the, the night guard or the, the twilight guard, but it could also be going for him because it's a Joe weapon. I don't know, whoever you want to own this owns it. It's just cool to get another pure black M16 like we did with Grunt. It's a great weapon to have into your arsenal. Pretty simple. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to have another one. So let's take a look at these individual figures and see how they are, because of course these are repacks, so we need to know how they articulate and whatnot. So we're gonna start with the Steel Core Commander right here. Just without no further ado, let's just get started, right? Steel Core Commander seems to be a reuse body of low light for the most part. I'm not sure who this upper body is from. I think it might be... Okay, so the upper body right here is from Beachhead, the original Beachhead. And then these, these arms seem to be stalker arms, while the legs are, of course, low light legs. So body is classic Beachhead, Stalker arms, low light legs. A really interesting little uh, amalgamation of parts, but it makes him look really nice and filled out. One of my main issues with the original Steel Core was he had a nice big bulky upper body and then these kind of really narrow thin legs. They used the uh, breaker legs on him and those ones are just too thin for the upper body mass he had. This one looks nice, filled out, 
and I do have an extra low light laying around, so I might just have to do some customizing and upgrade my original steel core to bring it up to the greatness that this commander's at, because this looks like a perfectly proportionate figure. Really nice. Articulation wise, we know how this goes. He's really stiff right now because he's brand new, but I think we I think we covered low light. Of course, it's just double jointed knees. Of course, they're really stiff. So um, you already know you're gonna get the articulation you want in there. Pretty good head articulation. Pretty standard, okay? We've we, we've covered all these characters before. I'm almost positive I reviewed low light. It's been a while since low light came out, so I'm not entirely sure because I, I have had, uh, you know, absences and breaks. Certain Joes I got that I haven't reviewed. So I'm not entirely sure if I reviewed low light, but let's just be safe in case I didn't. The knee bend goes about that far. Of course, you get a ab, I mean a thighs swivel and a pretty short boot. So it's probably not gonna be compatible with swapping with many other boots because usually they're a little bit taller than this, but that's all right. Especially in this color combo, it looks really nice. It gives it a nice armored, heavy material, almost Kevlar uniform look to it. I really like this filled out look. Now let's move on to the true, true reason I was instantly sold on this set, the, Crim the Knight. I said Crimson Guard, the Twilight Guard. So, reuse check, what are we reusing? The body is obviously a Cobra Officer. The legs are Crimson Guard. The pants are Crimson Guard. Head's Crimson Guard. But these arms, what are these arms? I don't think I've seen these before. I, I mean, they have a unique material on the bottom that, that keeps them with that kind of riveted or, you know, um, textured material that, they're, that the Cobra Officer has on it, but this is not a Cobra Officer arm, which leads me to believe these might be brand new. Hold on, guys. Let me go cross-reference with my collection, see if I see these arms anywhere else, and see if these might be brand new uh, arms. All right, so I did the check and I didn't see anything that had anything like this. Even the hands. Look at those interesting, uh, that interesting kind of half gray, half black with the riveted material or the, uh, it keeps it riveted, the kind of ribbed material, ribbed material with the, um, the textured glove. Okay, that's what I mean to say. The textured glove, uh, the two-tone hand is actually, I think a new part. Again, it might be from a Cobra figure I don't have because I don't buy everything. I buy what appeals to me. So if this is on a figure that I don't own, uh, you guys are gonna have to let me know. But as far as I know, these entire arm and hand is a brand new part. So really, really cool stuff. So as for that, we have the Cobra Officer gear, uh, Crimson Guard belt, Crimson Guard holster, brand new half cape. This was another huge reason I got this. It looks a little cheap because it kind of kind of looks like it's gonna rip right there. It doesn't look like a super tough um, attachment point, so I wouldn't go crazy on customizing this thing. I don't know how many times you could feasibly pull this thing off without it kind of tearing eventually. So this is definitely a figure you get and you uh, do it as minimal kit bashing on it as possible, if any, to uh, bring it up to whatever standard you want. And uh, these shoulder pads here are actually from uh, Tripwire. I have an extra pair of these that I've been trying to use on other figures. Probably gonna give this to a Cobra Soldier because I saw somebody pull these off of him and I really like this look as opposed to the default look. You actually do get more articulation with this uh, as well, but I don't know, just this more slender look, wielding a sword, it just fits better. So I'm probably gonna have this guy without his shoulder guards and just have them like this. I think this looks way cooler, just in my opinion. And since there's really nothing too new on him, I guess we could take a look at the um, the articulation on the arm, which is, of course, pretty standard. Uh, pretty, well, actually, that's a really nice uh, elbow bend. Pretty, a little bit farther than other figures, but not too much. Still a nice improvement over the status quo. Again, if these are not new arms, let me know down in the comments. Anyway, let's arm them up and see how they look fully geared up. All right, so here we have these two. 
with everything they come with all geared up and as you can see they have some clear standing issues these uh low light legs are not the best at least the boots on them aren't very good uh, but these look really cool one nitpick i have to have about the crimson guard is this backpack i heard people saying that the, the gun hill backpack was bad i didn't believe them but it just sticks up so ungodly high on his back it's not good does not look good from the front at all uh, it would have been nicer if it had a lower profile and you couldn't see it from the front keeping it the, the you know the whole outline clean but no this thing just throws up the whole look so sorry backpack you have got to go but it does work fine with the, the back cape so if you wanted to touch anything of your own back there the cape will not get in the way be just fine uh, another thing i have to say about the crimson guard or the again i keep calling the crimson guard the twilight guard is the chest well the uh, look of this is nice. I love the Cobra Officer, yada, da 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 I would still think that the traditional uh, Crimson Guard chest would have been preferable. And then it's nice black and purple. It would have looked so cool. That's just my opinion. I still think he looks great. I just think he would have looked a little bit better with that traditional, you know, Crimson Guard look with this more you know kind of napoleonic look to it i don't know it would look really good with the black and then the purple highlights going around it just my opinion i still think they should have gone with that actually now that i'm noticing it these are not crimson guard boots um i'm not entirely sure what boots these are i think no i'm not entirely sure oh wait now i remember these are tripwires boots okay those are Tripwire's boots. Now I recognize them. Those would have been probably another thing I would have probably kept from the uh, the Crimson Guard is the boots. I, I really love the Crimson Guard's more uh, cavalry looking boots. These just scream regal military, you know, ceremonial military uniform. And I think they would have really fit this night kind of mysterious soldier vibe. Ah, oh, would have been so cool. So I actually might go back and do some customizations later on, we'll see. But in the meantime, what complaints do I have about the, uh, the commander? Well, only that he doesn't come with a backpack. I feel like it's a little unfair that this guy has a backpack and it's kind of crap, but this guy has nothing. So I don't know. I think just repack him with anything like a grunt backpack. Those are usually really good. Or uh, Duke's original backpack. That's a really good one to have repacked. Not Outbacks. So that thing is huge and ungodly, but one of the more fair, like I really like uh, again, Dukes, uh, Grunts, and um, Wakandos are great backpacks to reuse. They have great molds. They're nice, like, fair sizes that don't overweigh the figure and add a lot to the look of it. But that is really all I had to say about this really cool two-pack. It is extremely unexpected to get from them, but, of course, Classified has been doing a lot of deep cuts recently. Quarrel, uh, Glendo with the... Um, the dragonfly and now this which was based off of a random variant of the steel core figure i really like that they're you can tell the people behind this line are huge fans of the property and so now therefore the line is thriving because of it we're getting cool figures of obscure characters everybody's favorites gonna get a figure i rate this set about a seven or no an eight out of ten uh 7.5 it's all reuse it's cool reuse it's completely optional though if you don't like this and you don't get it you're not just subtracting anything from your collection these are really just bonuses there if you want them hence why they're exclusive to pulse so therefore their neediness is not all that there and as a bonus set i still think it is worth getting but not so amazing that i think the hate is unjustified or anything. I mean, I still don't think the hate's justified because you don't have to buy it, but I understand why people have complaints, reservations, or even dislike it outright, but uh, I love it. I think it's great. I'm happy I got it. While it came at a pretty bad time when I already got charged for two Rattlers, uh, a Stingers, uh, Once a Man Cobra, it was a crazy month this month. So I think they should have waited a month on it to drop it personally but i still think it is a great set 
great to get uh, a bunch of extra weapons and uh, just some cool parts if you want to just use this for kit bashing because there's a lot of really useful parts in this set. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Toy Adventures. Signing out. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.